I'm Bob Briggio, and with me is Jerry Mitchell, a veteran of the, I want to say the Vietnam era veteran, a navigator on a B-52, and his banner hangs among the other 300 plus banners that we see all displayed throughout Rapid City. And behind each one of those banners is a story. Every photo you see up there, there's a story. Certainly we can't relay all of the stories that these banners represent, but we could certainly relay a few. And we'd like the folks to hear some of the stories that you may have in your experiences as a, a, a veteran in the Air Force. So you, you mentioned you're a navigator. Tell us a little bit of your, your training and, and how, did that, how did that evolve? Well, first you go through basic navigation training, which is one year, and then you go to advanced navigation training, which is another year. And then you have to go through crew training, missile training, so it ends up to be a real good two years of training before you can even start out as a navigator in B-52s. And you mentioned there's, there's a crew of six back then. Now, what, what years are we talking about when you were in the service? 1961 to 68. Tell us about some of the missions that you would have to fly. Well, a normal mission would be 12 to 14 hours long. And we would uh, first take off and usually hook up to the tanker. And then from then on, we'd either do a nav mission, either celestial at night or something else during the daytime. And then usually we'd go enter low level and do bombing, bomb runs on... Uh, now you, you say low level, how low to the ground were you? No lower than 500 feet, and generally from 1,000 to 500 feet. There's different routes. One of them was out at Scenic here in, in Rapid City, and they have a racetrack where you go around and around, and you have to hit the targets at a certain time. You have to enter within two minutes because there's airplanes behind you, and so you have to be on time and to the target on time. <laughs> of course, we had other missions, too, where we did, uh, it's called a chrome dome, where we went up over the North Pole and around. Ours wasn't a chrome dome, ours was called a hard hat where we went up and monitored the Thule BMU site for 12 hours. We were on station for 12 hours. The flight was usually 24 hours long, going up and back. Which requires, what, two or three refuelings? Just one, and we refueled uh, right up there at Thule. You left the service just prior to Vietnam, but you, there's a story to be told about which surprised me. I was over in Okinawa, I was forecasting for the B-52s that would fly over uh, Vietnam. And they, were, they, and they would fly up around 30 or 35,000 feet and, and drop their bombs and then re return back to Kadena on Okinawa. But you said that the Vietnamese had a way of shooting some of those down. Yes, Can you right. explain that? I think the tally was 14. I have a magazine there that tells the, uh, the number of planes and the people that were killed in that. But what happened was they flew the same route day after day and the ECM operator in the back of the airplane would jam their radars but but when you turned it, would, it wouldn't be jamming them. So what they learned to do is when we went into a bank turn to send a missile up because that was a vulnerable time for the B-52 and they ended up shooting one down quite often. So then they changed the whole situation. The, the B-1 bombers that we have out at Ellsworth now, do they still fly the same sort of mission that the B-52s fly when you were when you were navigating? Pretty close, I believe. I don't know exactly yeah. what their flights are, but we still have a low-level route out here to the west of uh, Rapid City in Wyoming. And uh, you'll see them going out that way quite often to do the low-level route and, and bombing. And I'm not sure where the radar scoring sites are today. You know, they move them occasionally. How much time did you have? If there's a mountain out there, how much time did you have to, to, using your train of orange radar to say, oh, we got to pull this thing up a little bit? Three to six miles, usually. And you're going how fast? Uh, generally around 400 knots. 400 knots, three yeah. to six miles. It doesn't take very very no. much time to cover three to six miles at 400 knots. It's about seven, seven nautical miles a minute. So you had to make a decision pretty quickly. Yeah, the radar told you. you know. Well, yeah, the radar told me. 
But who? But the pilot had to pull the stick, or well, certainly. But uh, you had always one looking out the window and one maybe with a, something blocking his view, so that he used the train avoidance ra radar, and it was it was pretty accurate. Uh, uh, we had one route that turned at Cook City on top of that deal, and the route came across northern Montana, ended up at a uh, mountain right there at Cook City, and, and if you didn't start by six miles, you put, probably wouldn't make it over. So there was a couple scary moments there at the beginning. <laughs> Cook City is the northern entrance to Yellowstone, if I'm right. Wow. How many missions uh, did you fly while you were in the service? Probably four a month, so. Oh, wow. Four a month. Yeah, at least four a month, yeah. The Air Force was enjoyable. I enjoyed my time there. It helps you professionally in some other endeavors. I ended up getting a pilot's license while in the Air Force and did a lot of flying after that. So it does help you after you're out of the service do different things. And it's enjoyable to go to different bases and see what the rest of the United States or the world looks like. And what model P-52 did you fly? I flew in the H model, although I did fly in some of the others, but primarily in the H model, which is the newest P-52. Do you have any stories about refueling? How did you hook up with those tankers? And how long did it take you to hook up? And did you ever, you, you never missed the refueling. You always hooked up. All, all, of all the missions you were on, you never missed one, did you? Uh, pilots get real proficient at hooking up. And they transferred 6,000 pounds a minute, so it didn't take long to refuel. 11, 12 minutes, you usually had all your fuel if you had a lot to take on. Had other B-52s in line? I mean, is it like uh, pulling up to a gas station, you gotta wait in line, and then you're next and you pull up? Is that how that works? Well, normally if you took a lot of fuel, you had to have a, a refueling tanker for each B-52. Okay. So, no, it wasn't in line. You were all hooked up maybe at the same time, so. And were you able to refuel at night? Yes, they did refuel at night a lot for practice. And the normal refuelings were just for practice, just hooked up and took on a, a minimum amount of fuel just for practice. And just hung on to the tanker for maybe 15 minutes for practice for the pilot to get some time behind the tanker. Thank you, sir. Thank you, you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Yes, thank you.